We started with concussive injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. But what we quickly realized is it's one brain and one mind, and these systems of brain function overlap into multiple conditions. So we stopped looking at necessarily the condition or the diagnostic label and instead started to look at the, the brain systems which are impacted in any of these conditions. And that led us to think, well, how about all the other kinds of brain conditions that might profit from this uh, set of tools and techniques? So the center now treats patients with many different types of brain-mind related injuries. So we treat, as we said, traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. We treat anxiety related disorders in general. We treat major depression. We have patients here with multiple sclerosis. We have patients here with dementia. We have patients here that uh, are post uh, uh, brain surgery and are in post-surgical recovery. We have patients here who have some toxic injury to the brain based on, based on post-chemotherapy treatment for various forms of cancer. They're here. We have severe attention deficit hyperactivity disorder children. We have autistic children here who all are benefiting from various um, tools and techniques that are available in this system of care. So if you look at that population, you're not now talking about a very large uh, civilian uh, cohort in, that could profit from having this type of care and exposure. We've by and large managed to standardize the data that we're collecting. So the Intrepid Spirit, it creates an, an arena where the Greenside, with their concerns, can come, share those concerns. The, they can connect with the uh, academic institutions that takes these concerns and reframes it into a hypothesis that can be testable, that will produce data, that results in actionable information, that will help the warfighter, will decrease morbidity, mortality, and could potentially be translated into the civilian community. So the great benefit of what we're developing here is that it'll set a standard of care and a mechanism of care to be used throughout the community for young children with soccer injuries, young uh, men and women playing football, playing any other combat or, or contact related sport in, in which the danger of head injury is a real possibility. Neuroplasticity just means that the brain is uh, able to change very readily, it accommodates very readily. So up until recently, again, th this is all news to us, up until recently we thought that the brain was no longer able to change after different ages. People set that at different age, but it generally was when you were a child or a teenager. Some people said it was six years old, some people said it was 12 years old. And we now know that the brain actually will sprout and prune new connections throughout the lifespan, even when you're older. That's why it's important as you get older to do really novel things that are really interesting and use other parts of your brain that you've never used before so your brain will sprout new connections and uh, create new pathways. It keeps you very mentally agile. So neuroplasticity is just a word that means that your brain is constantly changing and will adapt to whatever it is that you're doing in a positive way and also in a negative way. But that's why you can be an older person that if you're traumatized, that can stick with you. But we can repair all that and restore functioning through uh, neuroplasticity. So there's hope for me yet? There's hope for everybody.